CS2 is real, and it is about to change everything. Oh. Look at this. Oh. This is exactly what oh. I'm talking about. Oh. Pika Boo! Oh, you did! Oh. <laughs> yes! That's what we're talking about. It's got better graphics, sleeker skins, and smokes that have the potential to reshape the entire game. But he's out that long in, in oh, Pascal. Going? That's how you use it, Jordan. That's how you do it, baby. But Valve has also promised something that CS players have been begging for for years. Better servers. Dude, it's like oh, yeah. What the f I is it in DOS already? It feels terrible. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we can't. I mean, we're done. That's it. Valve's promise of improved servers with the launch of CS2 seems too good to be true. I don't trust the f 64 tick or whatever, fake tick, whatever they came up with. I don't trust that shit. Whatever they're doing is something shady. But even if they are better, can they really save Counter-Strike's god-awful matchmaking? Spring is finally here. So before we get into the video and start talking about CS2, I want to remind you all that we have merch. With the new season upon us, perhaps it's time to upgrade your wardrobe just like Valve allegedly upgraded their servers. Head to shop.thescore.com and click on our esports collection to check it out. Okay, so it is no secret that CSGO matchmaking can be pretty bad. From the obvious aimbotters to the toxic griefers, there are plenty of people who make it their mission to ruin the experience for everyone. For casual players, this is obviously very frustrating. But even if you do manage to find a match that does not have any of these cringe-ass cretins, there is still one problem that haunts CSGO to its very core. The base servers are 64 tick. Now, if you're wondering what tick rate is, Colton did a pretty comprehensive breakdown in our video about ping back in 2021. But to put it simply, tick rate refers to the number of times that the server processes incoming information each second. Things like player locations and bullet trajectory are updated in accordance with tick rate. And since 128 tick servers are simulating the in-game physics more times per second, some weapons are slightly more accurate and smokes actually travel further, which is why most of the time you need different smokes for 64 tick and 128 tick. Now, there are certainly ways to play the game on higher tick rate servers, most notably Face It. Face It has its own 128 tick servers, a working anti-cheat and an ELO system that allows you to work your way up the ranks. All things that CSGO doesn't really have, but for 90% of the player base, it's just not practical. They just want to load up the game, hop into matchmaking, and not have to worry about which smoke lineup to use, whether their shots will register, or if they're going to get mowed down by a cheater. Not to mention that some face it features, like vetoing maps or picking which servers you can play, are locked behind a subscription. It doesn't help that when the Valorant beta launched back in April of 2020, Riot had already solved many of these problems. Players could simply load up matchmaking and play on 128 tick servers with a functioning anti-cheat from the get-go. But for CS frogs like myself, this was actually a good thing. This put pressure on Valve to finally update Counter-Strike's infrastructure. Of course, it took them three years to do it, but hey, better late than never. Last month, Counter-Strike 2 was officially announced. It's coming with updated lighting effects and insane smoke grenade physics. And most importantly, Valve finally addressed the server issues. In previous versions of Counter-Strike, the game only evaluated moving and shooting in discrete time intervals, or ticks, and time between those ticks didn't exist. For the most part, the experience was seamless, but sometimes those milliseconds between click and tick could be the difference between landing or missing your shot. That's why with Counter-Strike 2, we're introducing sub-tick updates. Now the tick rate no longer matters for moving and shooting, so the server will know the exact moment you fired your shot, jumped your jump, or peaked your peak, and the server will calculate your precise actions between ticks. So what you see is what you get. You'll notice that they didn't say 128 tick, they said sub tick. Now, according to Valve, that's even better, but some players are still skeptical about it. Just remove tick rate, 
Just remove tick rate. If they don't know tick rate exists, they think it's all the same. It's genius, bro. They're still trying to save money, looks like. But I, I respect they're doing something. So it's good. It's good. Whatever. I, I, mean, it, I mean, it could be bad. It could be terrible, actually. It could be terrible. Once they eventually got their hands on CS2's limited playtest, players like Tarek and Shroud didn't exactly see much of an improvement. Shooting yeah, feels pretty pure wait, so wait, far. Just exactly. for, how, for, first, for the first version of this game, the shooting feels pretty solid. It something feels a little off. That shooting feels good. I don't trust the 64 tick or whatever fake tick, whatever they came up with. I don't trust that shit. Now, although Tarek was mostly trolling and some people think that Shroud was coping for being slightly washed. Hey, I didn't say it. His chat did. There were definitely some more credible names who thought that CS2's tick rate didn't quite feel up to par. The Estonian goat Rops even posted in a 1.6 KZ forum that sub tick rate doesn't feel as good as described. There's obviously a difference between 64 and 128. It is the only thing which feels bad. Maybe it can be tweaked. It's more like 64 than 128. Loba in particular was, well, shitting all over it. CS2 sucks dick. We reached out to Valve, hoping that they would share some info with us about how sub tick updates work. As expected, they didn't respond. Honestly, honestly, I think I'd have a better chance at getting in contact with Joe Biden than someone at Valve. I'll lead an effective strategy to mobilize true and international effort to pressure. That being said, some members of the community, like Mr. Maxim, have taken matters into their own hands and are speculating that the large packet sizes being sent from CS2's servers imply that they are in fact 64 tick. Because the packet is so large, it needs to be split into a secondary packet that is sent immediately after the first one, which could explain why the time between the first and second one is so fast. And theoretically speaking, if it could send the packets without splitting them, assuming that's what's happening, we would be seeing 64 packets per second, and the average millisecond would double. This means it would look more like a 64 tick server. This is why I think my speculation from last video is probably incorrect. What feels more likely to be true is that the server was running closer to a 64 tick environment, but because the packets are so large, they needed to be split into two. Now, for some of you, I know that all of this tick rate talk is putting you to sleep, but I know somebody who is frothing at the mouth to share his thoughts with you all about Valve's new tech. Isn't that right, Colton? And now, the guy who actually knows what he's talking about. Oh, so you will listen to a controller-loving casual, but only when it's convenient for you. I see how it is. Thankfully, the areas where Dimitri can call himself the guy who actually knows what he's talking about are narrow enough that I don't think we have to worry about him taking my job. When Valve dropped their Moving Beyond tick rate video, one thing in particular stuck out to me. This graphic right here. As soon as I saw that, my computer nerd brain went into overdrive trying to figure out how the hell they would even do that. So I'm gonna share with you my mildly educated guesses since Valve has been pretty quiet on their cool new NAT code. First things first, the servers still have a tick rate, so to speak. They aren't just processing and sending out packets at light speed because, well, that just isn't how servers work. So barring Valve having servers from the space future, how are they getting these sub tick updates that they're touting? Well, my first guess actually came straight from that graphic I mentioned earlier. When your PC sends off the network packet with your inputs to the Valve server, it's timestamped thanks to your local game running its simulation at the same tick rate as the server. So when two players inputs show up, the server can figure out which happened first thanks to these timestamps. I know, I know I'm oversimplifying a lot, but I'm not a distributed systems developer and statistically I'm here trying to explain this to a lot of other non-developers. That's you guys, in case that wasn't clear. Essentially, with this model, even if my inputs are faster than my opponents, if they both happen within that same 164th or 128th of a second that the server tick rate runs at, then they may as well have happened at the same time. But what if instead of being timestamped by the tick they happened on, these inputs were timestamped with the millisecond they happened on? Then, even though the server doesn't process them any faster, it can know down to the millisecond which player's inputs happened first, and calculate back in time through the server tick to get the most accurate simulation. But, of course, it's not quite as simple as it sounds. 
As it turns out, synchronizing distributed clocks like that is about as non-trivial as it gets. Distributed systems designers try at all costs to avoid designing anything that relies on synchronized clocks across machines. Whether Valve has developed some ingenious code to create a super accurate millisecond synchronized clock between players and the server, or some other method using complex math, logical clocks, whatever, one thing is certain. The packets that your CS2 client is sending the server are way bigger than they used to be, which makes me think that however they're doing it, Valve servers are getting a much more accurate picture of the player's inputs and when they happened. Until Valve opens up more about what's actually going on here, everything is just speculation. But considering how old and incredibly difficult to work with the CSGO source code is, to say nothing of the cost, I can't imagine Valve were super keen to move all their matchmaking servers to 128 tick. So by my best guess, you're still playing on the exact same servers as before. And Mr. Maxon's packet data seems to back that up. Has Valve managed to completely revolutionize low tick rate netcode? I guess time will tell. And that was the guy who actually knows what he's talking about. All right, look, the limited test is indeed very limited. Not many people, myself included, have had the pleasure of experiencing CS2 in all of its glory. Probably because I didn't spend the last couple of years grinding matchmaking. Or, you know, Valorant. <laughs> what the f did I hear? I thought I heard one spawn, bro. F this f shit. When's CS3 coming out, bro? But thankfully, I do know one man who has. One Jordan Nothing Gilbert. We had the pleasure of sitting down with Mr. Flashbang Dance himself to talk about his experience with CS2 thus far. My first impression was, hey, I'm happy that it doesn't look too crazy. I'm happy that it doesn't look too different. Better looking brightness, colors, vibrancy, that stuff. Um, I'm just hoping there's still a little bit of uh, muddiness in kind of the feeling of, of the mechanics, but it doesn't feel as bad as CSGO did when it first came out. I don't know exactly where the clunkiness is coming from that I'm feeling. Um, you know, they have their new lossless tick system that they claim, and I don't fully understand it yet. But something about it feels like we were joking that it feels like, like 88 tick or something. Like it feels a little better than 64, but does it like we're not quite sure where like the registration kind of felt good shooting kind of felt good but then like the spray and movement randomly it just felt a little clunky especially the movement you kind of catch yourself not feeling not feeling fluid so there are definitely some mixed feelings about cs2 especially when it comes to its sub tick updates i'm still not exactly sure how they work but there's definitely still a lot of people out there who do not agree that they make the game feel better. That being said, there's no denying that Valve's CS2 announcement seriously lit a fire under the casual player base. Since the release of CS2's limited test, CSGO's player base has continued to reach all time highs. And with a proper functioning anti-cheat allegedly coming with the new installment, there's no denying that Valve are finally trying to improve their game in a way that matters. The game is still in beta, and there's plenty of time for Valve to make changes before its official launch in the summer. But as long as Valve stay true to their promise and the servers actually feel better, then I can't wait to get my hands on it. Just like everybody else. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring the notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit us up on our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok.